Hey, welcome back to Everything Fly Fishing. In this video, we are going to show you how to tie the sulfur nymph, which I love this nymph. A lot of luck with it. So, on to the fly. Get a grip on your bad self, learn to love the game. Get on down to the roulette wheel, and pray that the end comes and wheels will win its way. And the hotel's not alive, and the mystery's not the why. Oh no, and silk is not the cry. No, it's the love, and it's the love. You want to start by putting your bead, or wait, sorry, you want to start by debarbing your hook, and then you want to put your bead on, and it's this is a black bead. Okay, and we're not going to put that on this fly because we want to be able to control the different depths we fish it. And we'll just add that weight to the, the tippet so that we can control different depths. Um, so we're going to start our thread right behind the bead and wrap it all the way back to where we're going to start our tail. And we're going to use lemon wood duck for the tail, which really matches the tail. And we're going to use it for the legs, which really matches the legs too. So we're going to tie this in for the tail. And you don't want very many strands of this. Maybe only four, three strands of this. You want it really spread, really light on the tail. Next we're going to tie in our rib and uh, it's a black piece of really light wire. You're going to run that wire all the way back to where you want to start your dubbing for the body of the fly. And for the body we're going to use rust, dark rust, brown for the body material. When you put your dubbing on, you kind of want it to look like that. Start real small, taper up. Big, come back down, and come back to a point. And that'll make your body, because you want to start the back once it be small, smaller, not as much dubbing, and as you go towards the middle, dub it, and you're going to make a cigar shape out of your dubbing as you apply it to the fly.
Now you're going to wrap your rib your fly and you're going to wrap that the opposite way you did your dubbing. This will help lock your dubbing down and hold it so it don't all fray off or fall off while you're fishing it. Now we're going to take a yellow goose by it, and we're going to select this from about middle. You don't want it to be too wide. You don't want it to be the whole thorax. You want it to cover just a little strip down the middle of the thorax. So, and we're going to tie this in by the tip. And once we got it tied down, we're going to cut the very tip of this. That also none is sticking out. Here we're going to cut a piece of quarter inch wide piece of plastic bag. Just use the zip, the average freezer bag, whatever. We're going to cut it a quarter inch wide and tie that in. Now you want to make sure that goose by it and that plastic bag is directly on top of the hook. Now we're going to come back with that dubbing and this time we're not going to make a big noodle we don't have very much to cover just a little spot and this distance that we're going to cover for the thorax uh, you should make about the same size as the bead itself so we're going to dub the thorax up now we're going to come back in with that wood duck just the smallest clump maybe about five or six strands of that wood duck and we're going to tie one straight a little clump on one side towards you me and another little clump on the other side towards you and we're going to tie them both of them clumps down and this will be your legs Now I throw a quick whip finish on it so that things don't arm fray later as you're fishing. Now you want to pull that plastic bag up towards the bead and this is going to start your thorax. We are going to paint this, bead, this plastic black then 
as you will see. And you could use pla a black uh, scud back or uh, plastic black material or uh, nymph skin. It's black. Or it's just I've never seen the purpose of wasting that material. You could just cut a bag. And once you're done, you'll see that everything's getting sealed off. So there's no way that it's gonna colors are gonna come off or any of that. If you are using the paper bag, you want to wait till that marker dries, now, which I recommend. They're cheap. They have them all over the place. Wait till it dries, and you want to pull that yellow goose by it up over and put it right in the middle of that thorax you created with the plastic bag and tie it down and cut the rest of the waste material off. Now you're going to whip finish the fly. Now we're gonna take a drop of that UV epoxy. Uh, if you don't know, go back and look at our uh, product demos, and we have a product demo of it. We're gonna use that, and we put a little drop on top of that thorax. Hit it with the UV light, and it'll get hard, hard, hard. And that color will never run out of that, never come out of that. It'll stay looking like that for years. Well, till you lose it because you get stuck on the bottom, but. Hey, thank you for watching our video all to the way to the end. If you like this video anytime, give it a thumbs up. And at the end of this video, you have a chance to subscribe by clicking the little our little symbol there. All you do is click there and subscribe easy. Make sure you go and check out your people up here in our list, like Team Hanging Outdoors. Go check out them. They post new videos all the time. Hunting videos are really cool. It's like our, uh, they're the one that got us started in this. So go check them out. Make sure you check out Trout Unlimited, who are doing really good things of keeping our streams clean and bringing new streams back to life that aren't in so good shape. Now, I hope you like this fly. This is a softer lip nymph. And, oh, man, i got to keep tying these as I publish this video because I need to have a lot of these in the boxes, and I'm currently out. So I'll tie up about 10 or 15 of these things and put them in me and Tracy's box because they're really good. And I think it's, they call it the crack shell uh, sulfur nymph. Uh, but the only ones I could find was kind of without yellow. I don't know if you could tie them maybe without the yellow in them. I don't know. 
But I like that little yellow thing. It seems to really get, I think the fish think sometimes this is a little too yellow stone. I'm not sure, but it really works. It's a really good pattern. So make sure you have these tied up. And thank you to our subscribers and people. And make sure you comment down below. Check out our links below to a Slate Run Tackle Shop, Blue Herring, where we buy a lot of our fly tying stuff. Check out all them, our links below to all our friends, associates. And like I always say, keep your lines wet, out of the trees, and only give them fish a sore lip. Hey, welcome to the end of our video where you can go and check out our playlist, like our fishing playlist, our tying playlist. Don't, eh, if you're watching this video and you haven't done this yet because you're new to this channel, make sure you click the subscribe button. And here's a video just for you.